Following heavy unseasonal rains and hailstorms, farmers met in Hyderabad to discuss the damage to the crops and efforts to secure relief for the impacted farmers. When they took their message to the streets, they were arrested. Kiran Visa explains. In the last uh, few weeks, actually, there's been a lot of uh, unseasonal rains, uh, uh, very heavy uh, rains and uh, hailstorms and so on. It's happening in multiple states, but in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, it's been particularly severe. Um, uh, it's happened in Haryana and other states also in March. But like in the month of April, for example, there were 16 days of very heavy rains. Uh, in March, this whole thing started from March 16th. 17th onwards, big hailstorms. And uh, hailstorms are very damaging to the crop. And uh, especially, uh, you know, when the crop is near harvesting uh, stage, right? So mango orchards got damaged, uh, vegetable crops got damaged, maize and, you know, many other crops got damaged. And uh, in the latest round of rains, a lot of paddy crop, which is like the major crop in the rabi season, also got heavily uh, damaged. Uh, so uh, this whole issue of natural disasters and crop damage, is something that we've been working on as uh, Raithuswaraj Vedika for for, uh, for a few years. Uh, that's one of the main, that, that issue and the tenant farmers issue and the farmer suicides. Uh, these are three or four major issues that we've been working on, right? Uh, so in Telangana, actually, we've been, it's been like a uphill uh, task for us because the government basically, uh, whenever a natural calamity happens, uh, it is supposed to do, and this happens routinely in uh, some of the other states, uh, they uh, uh, they are supposed to make, uh, you know enumerate the losses and uh, make a list of the farmers who are affected and issue some kind of a disaster relief and uh, this is actually mandated by the National Disaster Management Act uh, so it's a legal uh, requirement actually uh, but uh, Telangana government actually is quite negligent in uh, implementing many of the existing laws and uh, somehow they've been getting away from it getting away with it. Uh, they are, of course, a popular government. So they got re-elected in a big way and so on. So they just write the, the fact that they are, uh, you know, they are getting some kind of a popular mandate in the elections. Uh, and especially because they've kind of wiped out all the opposition, uh, including by buying all the opposition MLAs and so on. So they just write that wave of thing to act with impunity, like not implementing existing laws and so on. Uh, so this is what we have been basically uh, struggling against. Uh, so um, uh, initially, we, uh, you know, every year whenever there's crop damage, we would give petitions to the uh, to the local administration, to the state level, and uh, uh, we have organized some dharnas on this uh, issue and so on. Um, uh, but then we also decided that we should approach the court because the government is not listening. Uh, so the court cases actually have proved a little more effective. Uh, so, um, the, uh, like in 2018, uh, we had gone to the court uh, uh, on, uh, we filed a PIL on behalf of our organization that uh, the crops have got damaged and there's no compensation coming through. So at the time, we were working more focused in Adilabad district. So Adilabad farmers and uh, RSV members filed the uh, case. Uh, so there, the government actually... Uh, the, the the court actually gave an order uh, that the disaster relief should be given. That's an obligation of the government. Uh, so they ended up distributing about 22 crores uh, of rupees to the affected farmers. So even in that uh, situation, actually, it was only in the Adilabad district because we had a good collector, uh, Divya Devarajan, who also is actually an ex-Sage Chennai volunteer who became a collector. Uh, and we've been working closely with her. Because she is a good collector, she actually... Um, uh, though there were no orders from the state government, uh, she went ahead and got the enumeration of all the affected farmers. And because they had the data, uh, they had to give compensation to all those farmers. So that amounted to about 22 crores. But actually similar damage happened in at least five, six other districts. But those districts didn't have any data uh, of the affected farmers because they didn't collect it. And uh, so they didn't get compensation, right? So in 2020, when again, there was a major uh, spell of rainfall in October 2020, when like half the half of Hyderabad got flooded, and uh, it was like a very intense uh, spell of rains across the state. Uh, more, about 20, 25 lakh acres actually got damaged at the time. 
so we uh, we have once again you know asked the government to enumerate and give crop compensation and so on uh, they were giving compensation to the affected people in hyderabad but they actually were not uh, uh, enumerating so they were in 10000 rupees per family uh, you know in hyderabad but they were not ready to enumerate the farmers so we went to the court we filed a pil uh because that was the covid uh, time right 2020 uh, october this happened so courts were also running in a remote way and somehow the government got away uh with getting a many many uh, you know postponements of the hearing uh, without filing their counter affidavit uh we actually wanted an immediate action because unless the enumeration is done immediately it becomes difficult to give the compensation uh anyway finally the go- government got away with uh, some of those delays but uh, the court actually gave a very good judgment uh we we brought out the fact that uh, uh the government uh, uh, records itself uh, show that there's 15 lakh acres of severe damage they had submitted that report to the center uh, but they kept it secret right so when we file an rti uh, they would not respond at all uh, uh so finally we got it uh, you know from the center because uh, the court asked them to file it uh so there it was clear that state government itself had estimated that the 15 lakh acres of damage whereas in the court they were claiming that actually there was no damage uh, there was some temporary uh, temporarily crops were affected but they all recovered uh, magically due to uh, you know some very good advice by the uh, agriculture extension officer this is what they actually said in the court uh, so we exposed that actually their own records show the extent of damage and uh, actually even more surprising the uh, uh, the central disaster management authority Uh, had also sanctioned uh, relief funds to be distributed to the farmers so 188 crore rupees were sanctioned uh, to the state government uh, but even this was completely kept secret uh, until we brought out uh, in the court uh, in september 2021 right until then it was kept secret that they actually got this money uh, so then uh, the court gave a clear judgment that this uh, money has to be distributed and they, they in fact said that uh, because you were also not implementing a crop insurance scheme uh they uh, uh you know the farmer should get even a larger uh, share of uh, compensation uh, to 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 compensate for the fact that you didn't implement a crop insurance scheme right so this was like kind of landmark judgment and they also said that you should include tenant farmers when you give the compensation because they are the ones who are actually cultivating the crop um and they gave a four month deadline they it, so it was a timed uh, thing also Uh, but they waited for three months until like their time nearly expired, and then they went to the Supreme Court. So now we are fighting that case in the Supreme Court. So in the Supreme Court, basically what they said is, uh, apart from making all these other arguments, they also said that now it is actually too late to uh, enumerate the farmers who got affected. Uh, therefore, we can't uh, give the compensation, right? So. that is what we are fighting against in the supreme court unfortunately that case somehow uh, is moving slowly in the supreme court uh, but we need to do something to speed it up and because also the colin gonzalez was uh, fighting that case their organization is also in trouble so that's one of the reasons uh, but uh, that that is that that is uh, uh, you know one thing which happened but where the uh, uh, state government obviously felt the pressure uh and in july 2022 once again there were major uh, rains in this uh, in the previous monsoon season and uh, the state government also once again you know their initial estimate was about 5 lakh acres of damage happened a central team came and visited them also but even there again they didn't do any enumeration so what we did this time is instead of filing a pil we actually got a lot of the affected farmers to file uh, cases in the court uh, uh so then that will be taken up more more as an emergency because uh, it's like a uh, right to life kind of an issue uh, so uh, there the high court actually gave good judgments they said basically uh, i mean what they said very clearly is that uh, there is the disaster management act and there are the rules and uh, so the district collectors should not wait for any green signal from the state government uh, before doing the enumeration of the crop loss uh so uh, you should have done it immediately uh, and uh, whether the funds will be released from the state government to give them compensation that is the domain of the state government but uh, at least the enumeration and the whole process should happen see until now the process itself was not uh, happening so uh, of course this judgment came in november uh, so then what they did was those 14 farmers who filed that case 
so they went and uh, uh, you know noted down the losses of only those 14 farmers then we again said see it's not just a matter of those 14 farmers uh, you know at least that entire village should be done so we again filed case from another like 11 or 12 villages so then the court ordered uh, all those 11 villages to be and uh, you know to be surveyed again and to be done so some of those uh, farmers are uh, you know in the process of getting compensation but basically what the government uh, realizes is that if they don't enumerate uh, at the time of uh, the crop damage then it is going to be much more problematic for them uh, so we we were meeting agriculture officials also during the time so they were all under a lot of pressure due to that and in the meantime we were also we've been doing a public campaign about this about the fact that there's no crop insurance scheme in the state so the other thing is that in telangana there's no uh, crop insurance scheme uh, for the last 3 uh, years uh, so this crop insurance is one way of farmers getting uh, relief uh, the other way is the disaster relief so in most states actually both the mechanisms are in operation because one is a national law which they are supposed to implement the second one is a crop insurance scheme which uh, uh, you know telangana is the only state which uh, doesn't have a crop insurance scheme so we've been raising these uh, issues publicly uh, in quite a big way and also campaigning through the media and uh, also talking to all the political parties and so on finally in the last uh, few months right uh, opposition political parties also have started uh, taking up this issue so congress party is talking about it bjp is talking about it uh and uh, whenever there's a crop damage uh you know all the things that we got out through the court and uh, the court judgments and so on these are all becoming tools uh, to pressurize the government uh so uh so in, in in that sense in march of this year like in march uh, 23rd uh, when i uh, as i said right this whole hail storms and rain started happening from march uh, 17th onwards so on 23rd we got a major victory because uh, finally the state government uh, the chief minister himself uh, went and visited the uh, the, the damaged areas in uh, five different districts uh, and he spoke to the farmers and uh, he also found that in all the villages that he visited majority of the farming or a big part of the farming about 50% of the farming is done by tenant farmers uh so at the end of the tour he basically made an announcement that uh, 10000 rupees per acre of uh, crop damage uh, of disaster relief will be provided to all farmers who lost their crop right and uh, the preliminary assessment was 2.2 lakh acres so he said uh, you know we, we we are sanctioning 228 crore rupees uh, to uh, you know to support all these farmers and the second major thing that he said is that uh, tenant farmers have lost in a major way uh, due to this uh, 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 natural disaster so uh, i am issuing uh, instructions to all my officials uh, that uh, you should enumerate all the tenant farmers wherever the tenant farmers are cultivating and uh, the money will be deposited directly in the tenant farmers accounts so this chief minister actually until now he had taken a very adamant stand that the state government has nothing to do with tenant farmers uh they only recognize the land uh, title holders they don't recognize the actual cultivators and it's all between the landlord and the tenant that they need to figure out what is their arrangement and we are not going to get into recognizing the cultivator so this was like the adamant stand of the cm until now uh but now for the very first time actually uh he announced that the tenant farmers will be also enumerated and the money will be given to them uh so that's a like a major step forward on both these issues that we've been working on in telangana so K- uh, kiran is the uh, money to the tenant farmers uh, going to be in place of the money to the landlords like if the tenant farmers get the money for the same plot the landlord won't get it is it yeah yeah so i mean in this case it's the crop damage right so it is going to be given per acre and uh, it should go to the people who lost the money right who invested the money for the cultivation uh so that's the reason uh, it should go to the tenant farmer and of course if the tenant farmer gets it then the landlord doesn't get it right the landowner doesn't get it so uh so while that announcement uh, was welcome um so we did a press meet immediately the the, the day after that announcement uh, uh saying that you know this uh, we welcome this uh, but uh, this needs to be implemented properly uh because uh see the state until now had taken a stand of not recognizing tenant farmers 
now when they give uh, when the cm suddenly wakes up and says that all my officials are now going to enumerate the tenant farmers how are they going to do that right and uh, they have been used to uh, recognizing only the land owners uh so we we uh, you know made certain demands of how they should go about doing it and so on and also the fact that they need to make it as a policy decision so what we did was we uh, started doing a survey uh, we started going into uh, five or six affected districts and uh, going to some villages and doing sample surveys of how the enumeration process is happening like have the officials really visited your uh, village are they noting down the names of the tenant farmers and now they noting down the names of all the affected farmers and so on so uh, we did this sample survey in about uh, 19 uh, villages in five different districts so out of that we found that there were a lot of shortcomings in the surveys that uh, in the in the uh, enumeration process that the government was doing so then we brought that to the notice of the district collectors and then went and met the agriculture secretary and so on Uh, so uh, and we started highlighting that in the media so this is all the kind of work that we've been doing in the last uh, one month uh, after that announcement of the uh, disaster relief uh, so uh, in the process actually we were able to identify uh, some of the lacunae uh, which then got corrected at the collector level itself like uh, some some officials for example right were not enumerating the affected farmers uh saying that they had not uh, been enrolled in the crop booking ex- exercise at the beginning of the season uh but that actually is the shortcoming of the officials and not the fault of the farmers right so when we pointed that out at the collector level then uh you know they once again issued fresh in- fresh instructions uh to enumerate all of them in some cases actually they said uh, we don't have uh, any pro forma to uh, to note down the tenant farmers names so then once again we talked to the state government and uh, got them to issue that pro forma uh, and uh, those kind of things uh, so some improvements have happened in the enumeration process but in uh, majority of the cases like when we surveyed the when we did our sample survey we found that about 30% of the tenant farmers uh, were getting had gotten enumerated but 70% of the tenant farmers actually did not get enumerated uh so um uh, this is of course like a systemic problem right uh, there is a there is a law in the state actually which requires the state government every season to make a list of all the tenant farmers and issue them uh, uh, loan eligibility cards issue them basically identity cards as tenant farmers because they have not been doing that uh, suddenly if you ask the officials to enumerate uh, at this kind of a crunch time right when the crop loss has happened uh then it becomes uh, difficult for them to do and a lot of times the landlords uh, themselves will resist and they want their names to be noted down instead of the tenant farmers name uh but at least i mean one positive step has happened because the cm himself has recognized that the tenant farmers uh, face losses so when we went into the villages this time uh we found that actually the tenant farmers were also uh, more charged up see earlier because they were not getting any recognition they also would feel that you know if they raise their voice then they would actually get on the wrong side of the land owner the land owner may not give them the land on lease in 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 future and so on so they were always quoting those kind of uh, uh, you know issues uh, but now we found that in many villages the tenant farmers are like openly openly asking you know uh, it is our names which should be enumerated because that's the government's order uh, so therefore uh, they were arguing with the land owners that, uh, that uh, they they named should get uh, enrolled and in fact in one village where we went uh, where uh, eight seattle volunteer samyukta also was here uh, we we went on this field trip to a village in vikarabad so there actually uh, half of them uh, the farmers who came to our meeting were all tenant farmers and they said that in their village not a single tenant farmers name was enumerated they all suffered crop loss uh so they said uh, you know we are ready to fight for it uh we are ready to do dharna in front of the cm's house any protest that you do in hyderabad you call us we'll come uh, and so on so uh tenant farmers are also becoming more vocal so that's a positive uh, sign because last four five years when we were uh, fighting on this tenant farmers issue um initially we were the only ones who were speaking and later on some other organizations also started speaking but tenant farmers were afraid to come out in a big numbers uh, making such demands now they are uh, getting more uh, you know more agitated about it so hopefully there will be more positive thing in that direction also so 
uh anyway the the uh, just the last part of my update is that um the the initial announcement of the uh, disaster relief right which as i said is a, a very positive uh, step uh, that uh, was covering only the first four days so the one uh, they finally uh, enumerated about uh, uh, you know 1.5 lakh acres of crop damage uh, and they are going to give them 10000 rupees per acre uh but uh, that only covered march 17th to 21st period uh but actually there were subsequently many spells of hail storms as well as rain like i said in march uh, uh second half right from 17th to 31st i think there were about 10 days of hail storms and heavy rains in the whole month of april there were 16 days of very heavy uh, rains and some uh, hail storms so actually the crop damage is continuing so as of uh, yesterday uh, the official estimate from the government is 10 lakh acres so that's why we held the round table yesterday that uh, the entire 10 lakh acres of crop damage needs to be recognized by the government that they should uh, issue this 10000 rupees per acre to all of uh, all of them and uh, that uh, this kind of a crop damage uh, you know the disaster relief it cannot be a one time uh, announcement like suddenly the chief minister wakes up and says that you know now i'm going to visit and i'll make this announcement uh that uh, that should not be the case they should actually announce make it a policy decision that they are going to implement the disaster management act so so that it will apply to any future disaster also uh, right so that is an a major demand and uh, secondly that the tenant farmers uh should be enumerated in all these areas where the crop damage has happened Uh, proactively and uh, clear guidelines should be given to the uh, officials local officials to do that mm, and uh, the third thing is that actually telangana is the only state like i said which didn't uh, which doesn't have any crop insurance scheme uh, and uh, they got out of the centers crop insurance scheme uh, earlier in uh, 2020 and after that they didn't institute their own crop insurance scheme so for the last 3 years there's no insurance at all due to that actually farmers have suffered a lot um, you know not getting uh, compensation for any crop losses uh, so we made that also as a major demand so yesterday in the round table the good thing is that many of the other political parties and uh, organizations also were convinced about the crop insurance thing because many of them were a little ambivalent about the crop insurance earlier uh, so that has now become also a common demand so now uh, you know yesterday times of india also carried a huge uh, article on uh, crop insurance um and uh, uh, th- today you know andhra jyoti which is one of the big newspapers their uh, front page uh, the biggest headline was the fact that the, there's no crop insurance scheme in the state uh, so that kind of a pressure is now building up on the crop insurance scheme also so on all these three things uh, there is, uh, you know if, if we are able to achieve a more long term solution that's a very uh, big thing hey kiran uh, vijay here so yeah. um, what does it mean to be enumerated like what does what does enumerate mean no enumerate i mean enumeration is the term that they use but basically they need to make a see the way that the disaster relief process works here at least is that um they they need to make a list of all the farmers who have lost their crop uh so they go into the village and uh, uh, generally uh, i mean when they say crop damage uh they mean that uh, the there should be at least 33% of yield loss yeah. right? that's the definition mm-hmm. of the severe crop damage uh so that means that the uh, officials have to actually go and assess uh, how much damage has happened whether the mm-hmm. yield loss is going to be more than 33% so okay. uh, that's the assessment that the agriculture extension officials go to the villages and make and they are supposed to prepare the list of all the farms so i was thinking uh, is there a room or a scope for like a non profit or an ngo to um do kind of a like a enumeration that can be provided to the extension office you know it will be more timely right if it's local and you know and could there be some way in which the extension office is comfortable with that so that's one thought and the other you know it, it also helps create a record right that you can validate against um, or or you know like you said if it takes months for the these discussions to go on and lawsuits to be resolved 
at least you know there is a record of you know who uh, might have been affected um and then yeah. the other uh, kind of related thought was there is um you know is there is there a like a use for like technology here where you know you can detect uh, you know through aerial imagery or or uh, you know drones and things like that i've heard that being used to assess um, damage to crops right um, and that can cover like a large area and you know then it's not just the you know just the farmers world against the agriculture extension officers world right like you can actually get a scope of how much damage there was um Yeah. and are there you know such arrangements that are possible i know that it's probably happening in some places in india but i don't know if it's happening out there yeah so vijay no good questions uh, so um, i think see uh, as far as uh, non profits or other organizations doing the enumeration is concerned see that the government is not going to be ready for at all uh, i mean certainly not the telangana government but and also i have not seen that happening anywhere else also uh because uh, uh see essentially this is a this is a local governance uh, thing right uh, so this is essentially the kind of work for which uh, agriculture department has agriculture extension officers and uh, so on and also generally it is not a very uh, it, it, it is a, it's a very extensive job that needs to be done like for example this round right uh, when i am saying that 10 lakh acres got damaged uh this is kind of distributed over uh, uh you know 15 different districts and um, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of villages actually mm. uh, so uh, it is the government machinery that actually will be able to do a job of uh, enumeration uh, but also secondly there's an issue of legitimacy right uh, yeah. so um, it's the government which actually has the legitimacy to uh, do the enumeration and also certain kind of accountability right uh, if the government uh, doesn't enumerate uh, or properly then uh, uh, you know the farmers can ask them or do a protest or whatever uh, so both accountability wise and legitimacy wise it's the uh, domain of the government actually uh, and uh, and in any case the governments these days are so uh, uh, you know so particular about holding their domain uh that they are not going to give that space to somebody else to do that job uh but on the other hand right what you are saying um uh falls more in the domain of the crop insurance right so like yeah. i said disaster relief is one one domain which is uh, which is kind of the government implementing a certain act uh to provide relief and that happens through the government machinery uh but the crop insurance uh happens through insurance companies right Yeah. Uh, either it's a public sector insurance company like the agriculture insurance corporation or these days uh, especially last few years in the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana they've actually uh, involved a lot of private insurance companies to implement that so in the insurance thing how they uh, implement is where uh, i think some of this kind of technology and all that uh, has a scope of coming in uh, traditionally the way that uh, the uh, crop uh, Uh, yield is assessed is through what is called a crop cutting experiment yeah uh, so each insurance unit right if a village is a unit uh, then they pick four uh, random uh, plots uh, in that uh, village of that particular crop and they do a crop cutting experiment at the end of the season and record yeah. the yield and based yeah. on that they figure out whether that yield is less than the threshold yield or not and how much less it is and based on the yield loss then uh, the the insurance payment is done right uh, now um, there is uh, there are some states which are exploring this uh, kind of a satellite imagery thing yeah in west bengal uh, is the first state actually to try it uh, i'm also trying to get information of how actually it has worked in the last uh, one or two years uh, they have done it for uh, paddy and uh, jute uh, which are two major crops uh, over there uh i mean i i can see some pitfalls also in this uh, but there could be some advantages also it depends on how well the technology is uh, developed uh, but basically what they are doing is uh, they are taking this uh, satellite imagery every uh, uh, periodically right like every once a week or something mm-hmm. uh, so that through the different stages of the crop uh, looking yeah. at the satellite imagery they are uh, going to project whether there will be any yield loss or not 
uh, because there could be a pest attack uh, in some part of the season. There could be a dry spell uh, without rains. Like if there's more than 21 days without rain during the monsoon season, right? Then that's a dry spell which will damage the crop. So depending on all those things, uh, they are going to see uh, uh, from the imagery whether there'll be yield loss or not. And based on the predict uh, what will be the yeah. yield uh, rather yeah. than doing crop cutting experiment. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure how well that technology is actually going to do that assessment, but we can see because, it, like I said, in West Bengal, there's an example of the last couple of years for Paddy and uh, Jute. Yeah, I'm looking online. There is actually an app that they have called CCE-Agri, basically, mm -hmm. that uses satellite, like, that. you know, they're claiming that it helps with, right. you know, this. CCE, you know, CCE is actually a crop cutting expert. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. uh, initially, I think they might have developed that app to kind of collate all the crop cutting experiments thing. But uh, they are trying out the satellite imagery. Uh, I'm a little ambivalent at this point, yeah. but uh, we'll have to see what the results are. No, what I was thinking was, is there a, a way to keep the government honest, right? And use technology to do that so that, you know, your case becomes stronger, um, you know, when you're making that case. And also, you know, the... Even if it is disaster relief, you know, it has to reach the right people, right? Because like you said, it might reach only a subset of people uh, and not yeah, adding. Yeah, that is right. So it's a trade-off, right? So basically the crop cutting experiment, uh, there could be some uh, manipulation or some, uh, uh, you know, uh, thing, uh, things done in the crop cutting experiment, which will deny the farmers, right, the, the right uh, yield numbers and so on. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, this techno-driven, data-driven thing, right, uh, also might actually not reflect some of the ground realities. So uh, True. The, the satellite imagery may not capture uh, some of the kind of damage that happens. Uh, so the final yield numbers may not reflect uh, what uh, the satellite imagery predicts, right? So we'll have to see. So it's a matter of how good that technology is, I think. Yeah, yeah. So right. I have to give you two. Which is we'll... just one second. Huh? See, somebody else also has a hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. Yeah. No, was, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, Minal, go ahead. Oh, OK, thanks. So, Kiran, uh, in terms of like the other states, right, uh, when you compare them to Telangana and AP, how do how are they doing with regards crop insurance, tenant farmer treatment? And is there any leverage that can be had because of things working well in a particular state? Yeah, no, no, that's a good question. See, Andhra Pradesh in general has been doing better than Telangana in, in all these respects. Uh, like tenant farmers recognition, for example, right? See, both these states have the acts which require the government to recognize tenant farmers. In Telangana, they're, they're simply not implementing that act. In Andhra Pradesh, they're implementing that act, but that act is a little flawed. So uh, we've been campaigning there and uh, doing studies. And actually next week, we have a big public hearing there on this issue of uh, how well that act is being implemented. In Telangana, the act is not even being implemented. So we do take the example of Andhra Pradesh uh, to kind of say that it is possible to recognize tenant farmers. It is possible to uh, uh, reach the benefits to them, uh, like Andhra Pradesh is doing. Similarly, on the crop insurance also, they uh, they also pulled out of the central government's crop insurance scheme, but they started their own crop insurance scheme, uh, which actually is uh, was working quite well. Like in in a particular season, uh, they uh, the farmers got almost one thousand eight hundred twenty crores of. Uh, relief uh, through the crop insurance scheme there in uh, 2021. Next year, they actually got 2,997 crores, um, which is much larger compared to whatever relief that these people are providing now, right? Uh, so that that exam those examples are there. I think on disaster relief, almost every other state is doing better than Telangana, whether it's Karnataka mm -hmm. or Maharashtra or uh, Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu, any of the states. Uh, yeah. So if you had to like summarize the the top two prop just based on what you're saying, Kiran, it feels like is this really a process issue with Telangana? Is it more than that? Like why is Telangana so behind when you look at it at a strategic level, right? When you're looking at it at a high level, 
ਵਾਈਸ ਤੇਲੰਗਾਨਾ ਸੋ ਬਿਹਾਈਂਡ well i see two reasons some um, one is that uh, in telangana generally uh, the, the the their approach to governance itself is is very centralized so uh, some of these things which routinely need to happen at the ground level at the local level right uh, like this enumeration uh, of crop losses generally it's a process that's automatically triggered every time there is a major disaster uh so those kind of things these guys are not implementing in fact they even dismissed all their local village level uh, revenue assistance because they don't want uh, their local government to be more heavy whereas in andhra pradesh is the other way around like they actually uh, have employed many 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 more people at the local level in fact they have a village volunteer for every 50 families uh, in every village across the state right so uh, there there is a one one is that right they they have a different uh, way of governance which is completely centralized and it's all very driven very much driven by the chief minister uh, the second thing is that these guys uh, started off a, a big cash support scheme cash transfer scheme called raitu bandhu uh, where uh, every season they are giving 5000 rupees per acre to each farmer uh and uh, their internal thinking i mean though they don't say it publicly their internal thinking is that well we are giving uh, so much money as cash support to farmers therefore we don't need to implement all these other sundry schemes um but the problem with that is uh, that uh, uh, you know a that uh, that kind of cash support generally goes only to the land owners right uh, because it it is based on the title holders and telangana you know doesn't recognize tenant farmers so all that money is actually going to the land owners and uh, 35% of the agriculture is done by tenant farmers who are not the land owners uh, so they are getting completely left out of that uh, cash support scheme and now these other schemes which are supposed to benefit the farmers if they are also not being implemented then they suffer uh, you know uh, uh, double uh, so uh, so those are the two mm-hmm. reasons uh, so generally telangana prides itself in saying that it is the uh, state which is providing maximum support to farmers basically because of this raitu bandhu scheme uh, they are spending about 15000 crores uh, every year uh, giving this cash support to farmers uh, so therefore they feel that they have the license to neglect all the other forms of support no okay thanks kiran and 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 they made this argument in the court also uh, in a kind of an oblique way but the court rejected that argument because we also were arguing that you know raitu bandhu is meant for investment support to the farmers to enable them to do agriculture but it doesn't mean that you don't implement the existing acts like national disaster management act or or the tenant farmers act like for example does the ep support that same raitu bandhu act they do that no too. they have their own scheme see these days many state governments have a cash support scheme uh, but uh, it is not at this the scale uh, of telangana uh, like andhra pradesh gives 13500 rupees uh, to each family not per acre right uh, hmm. in a way this is more equitable see a half acre farmer also gets 13500 rupees uh a 5 acre farmer also gets 13500 rupees a 50 mm. acre farmer also gets 13500 rupees in telangana a 50 acre farmer is now getting 5 lakh rupees though they are actually uh, 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 you know maybe ultra rich uh, they are, may actually be living in the us or dubai or wherever uh, but they are getting 5 lakh rupees per year uh, because they own 50 acres of land Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's actually a scheme which is uh, not equitable it's like more skewed towards okay. the richer people uh, but he mm-hmm. uh, kcr kind of touts that scheme everywhere saying that we are giving the maximum amount of support lena do you want to ask your question go ahead um can can folks hear me uh... yeah hi pavan Uh, Should I go ahead? Oh, go ahead? Okay. Go ahead. Actually, Pavan Lena had a question in the chat. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no. Yeah. I was just sort of in general asking. Forget about it. Pavan, go. Oh, ahead. okay. Go ahead, Pavan. Sorry, Lena. I'm on the phone. I I can't really see who's got. That's okay, Pavan. It's okay. Go ahead, Pavan. 
go ahead okay um so the the couple of quick questions i had and then i guess one comments was the last thing that you said kiran the the couple of quick questions were regarding the money the the amount you at one point you said the 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 central government had sanctioned or given the state 188 crores which the state was uh, loath in giving out uh, to the affected farmers right so i'm curious to know what they do with that you know with that with that um uh, an undisbursed money is it going to benefit personal coffers of people within the government are they doing something else with it so that's one one question the other question is regarding um the 10000 rupees per acre uh uh release right uh, uh, again you had mentioned that there is 10 lakh acres that were uh that had been affected so uh, i did some mental math and i could be wrong on on this uh Uh, on the actual numbers but it sounds like it totals out to like something like 1000 crores so if if yeah. telangana has opted out of the the crop insurance scheme uh, both from the center and they don't have one of their own where is that money coming from to the to the state government how are they managing those funds and if it is a repeated like year on year thing then they've got to have some sustainable source for that right so so that is the other question and then the comment the last comment um uh, sorry the comment on the last thing that you said uh about the equitability of 10000 per acre versus 13000 per family i mean i guess it it uh, that's also a numbers thing right in the sense that you know if if most families uh, or if most farmers are small farmers and the the bulk of the distribution is that they all have two acres or less um then i think it is it is actually a good thing if they have 10000 per acre and not per family and you know of course it it leads to it leads to skews in the distribution if if you have 50 acres and you get 5 lakhs but if that's only a small amount of the total and the majority is getting benefited uh, you know getting more money if you have you know uh, a couple of acres or one and a half acres or something then i think that's a better better thing so just these three things thanks yeah so so to, to the last thing that you were saying right so basically uh, the the amount is large right this 10000 rupees per acre that is why it seems better than that 13500 rupees per acre but suppose that 13500 was actually 20000 uh, uh, or 25000 right per family that uh, that you are giving uh, then actually that would seem better no uh, because a one acre farmer uh, in this case would get 10000 in that case a one acre farmer would get uh, 20000 uh, so um, uh, see i i guess what i'm saying is basically that the Uh, uh you know when you make something which is a, fl- a flat thing per family uh that actually uh, goes more equitably to the uh, the lower um, land owning families uh, and it's also given to uh, tenant farmers in in that case uh in the in the case of ap uh in the case of telangana basically uh, see the average land holding is about 2 uh, and 1/2 acres uh okay so um the, the but, but there are significant number of people who are owning more than 5 acres of land uh, so we did this uh, calculation basically out of all the 15000 crores that is spent on raithbandhu uh, 42% of it goes to farmers who own more than 5 acres of land right 42% of that and uh, 20% of that goes to farmers who are owning more than 10 acres of land so um, uh, it's one thing about uh, you know uh, uh, making it per acre or not uh, but at least there should be a cap on uh, who you are giving to because essentially see money should go from the rich to the poor right not the other way around so now uh, it is it's actually a larger amount of money is going to the larger land owners less amount of money is going to the uh, smaller land owners and the zero amount of money is going to the landless right so that is the problem with that scheme so at least if they say that only uh, you know farmers who own less than 5 acres will get this support uh, then that per acre support also may be okay uh, but not if you uh, give like 40% of the money to people who own above 5 uh, acres of land who actually constitute only 9% of the farmers so 42% is going to 9% of the farmers and the farmers who have more than 10 acres of land is only 2% and they are getting about 18 to 20% of the support okay so, so got the, it that yeah, that yeah, that, right. that makes sense thanks 
yeah so that's about that and then the uh, uh, see the disaster compensation funds where they're coming from uh, that, that uh, uh, see the crop insurance is a separate thing disaster compensation is a separate thing right so the disaster compensation generally comes from what is called as a disaster relief fund where uh, uh, the, uh, where the center actually contributes 80% of that state contributes 20% so whenever there is a natural disaster uh then uh, there's a national uh, national disaster management act 2005 uh, based on which uh, relief is supposed to be given to the affected people i mean this ap- ap- applies not only to farmers but also like people whose house get washed away if there's an earthquake and uh, you know houses get damaged or some roads get damaged bridges get broken so all these come under the disaster management and uh, the state government makes an assessment of what is the disaster uh damage that has happened and uh, once the center uh, you know the the national disaster management agency which is there in the center approves this estimate then uh, the money comes from the disaster relief fund and uh, the contribution of the disaster relief fund is 80% center and 20% state uh so uh, that's why actually it uh, makes sense for the state government to really uh do a good assessment of the damage and draw a little more funds from the center right uh which is where these guys have totally failed uh the state uh, many other states are uh, you know very very prompt in terms of this disaster assessment second uh, the other thing that you are asking is this 188 crores if it came uh, what uh, you know what is it being used for see there basically uh, like i said see it all comes on into a disaster relief fund so Uh, so telangana will have its own state disaster uh, response fund actually it's called sdrf uh, so uh, the center keeps depositing certain money in the sdrf regularly uh, every year and then once a, a once some money is sanctioned uh, for a particular disaster then the uh, government is supposed to withdraw and spend that so when we brought this out in the court the state government made a very very uh, you know like fudging kind of arguments uh, firstly they said uh, we did not get the funds secondly they said whatever funds we got we actually spent for the covid relief uh, because this all happened during the pandemic and they said uh, we had requested a larger amount of funds for the pandemic which were not given by the center so we ended up spending all our reserves which are there in the disaster response fund for covid relief right uh, but then we also expose that uh, as of march 2021 uh, march 31st 2021 uh, there were actually 896 crores sitting in the uh, disaster relief fund uh, which were unspent or or even more than that actually we, uh, or even 1400 or something uh, so so many uh, hundreds of crores sitting in the disaster response fund which were unspent and you can't say that uh, you know it all got spent on covid or something so that whole uh, argument that the state government was making was very wishy washy uh, unfortunately that is still pending in the supreme court and uh, see, finally a lot of these things come out only when uh, the cag does an audit uh, you know after a couple of years uh, or something because these guys have not been even submitting the disaster response accounts uh, to the center uh, the state government uh, so we don't know actually wh- where exactly that got used maybe it might have got used to build this new secretariat also i don't know. is anyone looking into that last possibility ha huh, no no that no that i'm only joking it wouldn't have got into <laughs> the secretariat but uh, no see but the disaster response uh, fund mm. um, actually see this telangana government actually does a lot of um, jugglery with their budgets and uh, uh, and so on uh, because they have overspent on some of the projects like there's this big irrigation project like kaleshwaram project that they lift irrigation project on which they over uh, spent and there a lot of cost overruns and so on and uh, there are huge amounts that they have uh, uh, you know uh, yet to pay to the electricity uh, uh, you know trans transco like the transmission companies uh, 
because this lift irrigation project requires a lot of electricity, right? So these kind of things, um, they actually do some kind of an internal adjustments between the funds, right? Just to uh, ensure the cash flow. Uh, so they may have taken some funds for this to ensure cash flow to any of the other projects, but uh, we would never know until there is actually a proper audit. So, Can, can I ask? Right. Uh, yes, Veena. Uh, so, Kiran, in your experience, um, uh, which state is doing well with tenant farmers, whether it's crop insurance or other entitlements that they get, uh, if you know? Yeah. So, see, tenant farm, uh, with respect to tenant farmers, actually, the situation across the country is a very uh, bad state. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, actually, uh, Andhra Pradesh is the only state uh, which is doing something for tenant farmers, which is still inadequate, like we showed in the uh, study that we did last year. Uh, and that's why we are doing this public hearing also on May 10th in Vijayawada. Uh, but uh, basically, Andhra Pradesh is uh, one state which is uh, doing at least something for tenant farmers. So, they, they, they would be reaching out to about uh, 10 to 20 percent of the tenant farmers and ensuring that they get some support from the government okay uh, from the government support systems i mean uh, then with the other states like orissa uh, is one state where the, in their cash support scheme which is called kalia uh, they have uh, included tenant farmers also in that and orissa is one of the states which has a large extent of tenant farmers so they are doing decent just at least in terms of the uh, their cash support scheme uh, most of the other uh, states are not doing anything concerted uh, for the tenant farmers. Recently, what I heard is that Haryana has also started, um, uh, uh, you know, collecting the names of tenant farmers so that the disaster relief reaches them. Uh, but I don't know to what extent this is happening. This is a very recent uh, thing that they started, like from the previous monsoon uh, season. So I don't know how well that is going. Uh, but uh, uh, Andhra and Telangana are the only states which have an act in place, uh, which require the government to actually issue uh, identity cards to all the tenant farmers uh, so that they get access to all the government schemes. Thanks. Yeah, so our hope is that if... Uh, Andhra becomes a good, uh, I mean, does a good job of uh, the tenant farmers thing, then that can be touted as a model for the other states. But Andhra is also not doing that. Well. So that's what we are working on. Any closing remarks? Probably should. We uh, continue this discussion and other discussions when we see you at the conference and find out more. Kiran, about I, uh, sure. just one sure. thing. Huh? Kiran, uh, you know, when, when I had come to that uh, tenant farmer uh, meeting that you took uh, in Mysore, uh, there was a group from Haryana, right, which spoke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, they kind of seem to indicate that the IDs are there for all the tenant farmers because it's automatically a question that comes. Do you remember that? They, they yeah, basically you know, indicate that the tenant farmers Haryana. are pretty so much treated the same way as farmers in Haryana. That's what I thought. Uh, no, see, that's what I was talking about, Haryana, right? So this is a new scheme that they they, they started uh, from the, the previous monsoon season. Uh, it's They are not issuing ID cards, but uh, see, basically they do something called, a, I mean, in, in Telangana and AP, it's called a crop booking exercise. Uh, there, they are calling it by some other name. I forget the name. Uh, but uh, see, basically at the... Uh, uh, at the beginning of the season, like once the sowing and all that happens, uh, the agriculture officials go to the villages and make a list of all the farmers who have done sowing that season and how many farmers have sown which crop uh, in which survey number and so on, right? So that's called a crop booking exercise. So uh, they have uh, started uh, listing the tenant farmers as part of their crop booking exercise. So the advantage of that is once they get into that list of uh, cultivators, then if there is any crop loss or crop damage or uh, those kind of things, uh, or even let's say a subsidy scheme, right, for seeds or something else, some implements or something, 
then uh, these people will get, become eligible because they are already on the government list. Uh, so that is basically what they are doing. But that's a just a uh, uh, you know recent thing that they started, and also it's a scheme based thing. See, it is not a legal entitlement. It's a it's the scheme in which they have decided to enroll the tenant farmers. Okay, yeah. Somehow, like my impression was that uh, I had got from them, but I could be totally wrong. Was that this is not that recent that uh, Haryana has been recognizing their rights uh, for a much longer time. I was thinking more like three or five year time scale was what they were talking about, but I could be totally mistaken. Uh, no, no, Ravi, not not uh, three to five years. Uh, my uh, recollection is that it started this year itself, or it may be the previous year. Not, not, not more than that. Okay. All right. Great. Girl. So, yeah. I, I just have one uh, follow up. Just for my understanding, tenant farmers are those with zero land holding or under no, one acre land holding. Zero land holding. No, doesn't have okay. to be zero land holding. They could have their own land. See, typically these days, what's happening is that a lot of marginal farmers who have like one or two acres of land, uh, they are actually leasing land, uh, leasing other owners' land. Uh, so there are landless, completely landless tenant farmers. Uh, and uh, there are also uh, marginal farmers who are also tenant farmers. So generally in, in Telangana, for example, about 20% uh, of the tenant farmers are landless. 80% of them own some small piece of land. Okay. But as a political group, nationally, they're very small to have an impact. No, no, no. Uh, the numbers are large and the numbers are increasing, but uh, there is no collective voice, right? So, for a, as okay. a political, I mean, if they have to organize as a political group, uh, then they have to be collective, no? So, okay. right now, there is no uh, way of, uh, uh, I mean, there's no organizing uh, around uh, tenant farmers. Um, only in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, I've heard of, uh, I mean, there are actually tenant farmers unions. Uh, which are okay. organized by a couple of left parties, but uh, those are also relatively weak. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we, we'll we'll close here, and uh, hopefully we can continue the discussions in the uh, conference. Well, it's nice to see that the group is getting stronger with the solidarity of Raithu Swaraj Vedika. Yeah, uh, hopefully, I mean, this, this uh, thing that we are doing on May 10th in Andhra Pradesh, I think also that will uh, get a little more uh, support to the tenant farmers. We are doing a public hearing, actually. Medha Patkar is one of the panel members, and we have a Vade uh, Sobhna Driswara, who's a previous agriculture minister. He is also one of the panel members, and uh, a previous revenue secretary is also a panel member. Uh, so uh, hopefully after that, there will be a little more... Uh, pressure on the government to do something more about it. Yeah.